Namaste, welcome yogis. My name is Cassandra, and today I'm gonna to take you through an earth-themed vindhyan yoga practice. This means that we're going to begin our class with a dynamic vinyasa flow, and we're going to end with yin yoga, a passive style of yoga where we hold poses for a longer time. This elemental series is all about helping you connect to the empowerments of nature. So each element has its own unique empowerments and teachings, which we can access and cultivate and tap into in our yoga practice. So the element of earth is all about grounding, connecting to our roots, connecting to our foundation, and also seeking out nourishment focusing on perseverance and stability. So the poses that we'll be doing in this class are really going to help us access and connect to the earth, really working on the foundations, maybe a little bit of balancing, just so you can really find that um, attunement within you. And a lot of poses really close to the floor to again, get you like nice and connected to the earth beneath you. This will be a fairly strong practice. We might be holding poses for a little bit longer, again, to tap into that element of commitment, perseverance, and stability that we find within the element of earth. I like to have two blocks, especially for our yin practice. You might wanna use it. And we're going to begin lying down in Shavasana. So getting as connected as you possibly can to the ground beneath you. Roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. Take up space with your limbs as much as you'd like. And try to fully settle here. If you live in a warmer climate, this would be a wonderful practice to do outside. You could even do it without a yoga mat so that you're just feeling into either the grass or the sand or whatever it is. And if you're in a colder climate, like I am here in Ottawa, Canada, inside, maybe just mentally imagine yourself in whichever landscape you imagine when you think of the element of earth. So for me, it's like the lush, jungle of Costa Rica, bright green everywhere. And connect to your breath here as you soften. And just asking yourself, what is it that you want to learn from the element of earth? What can this aspect of nature teach you? Now stretch your arms up overhead, big extension, reaching out fingertips to toes. And we'll set ourselves up for bridge pose here. So you'll wanna bring your feet flat to the floor, knees hip width distance apart, and shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears. Really anchor through your shoulder blades. Keep your feet grounded as you push into your heels. Curl tailbone up, lift the hips, low back and mid back off the floor. And once you've found your full height, hug your inner thighs together a little bit so that you're not letting your knees broaden and open up wider. Push down into your big toes. Now lean onto your left leg a little bit. Keep your thighs parallel, doing the same thing, but just extend and straighten your right leg. Kick into your right heel. So you're trying to keep your thighs and your knees at the same height, reaching that right leg in a diagonal line. Maintain the lift of the pelvis, push even more through your left leg. The strength of the earth, find the stability, and very slowly start to come down and cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. Maybe you hold here or you can go into your stretch, reaching through with your arms. And I'm dealing with a little bit of a hamstring pull in my right leg. So you might notice me <laughs> modifying a few of the poses. So this one, I'm keeping my knee pretty far away from me. Maybe just rock a little bit, just inviting that hip to release. 
And let's bring both feet flat to the floor and we're just gonna go to the other side. So once more, feet about hip width distance apart, shrug and roll your shoulders down, push as you lift up. So you wanna be able to maintain slow, steady breath here. Hug in through your inner thighs and now lean onto your right leg as you straighten the left one. Again, try to keep those femur bones, your thigh bones parallel at the same height. So we're not reaching the foot up towards the sky, keeping it in a diagonal, <laughs> it's a lot harder. Push into your shoulder blades, push into your heel, squeeze, lift up even higher if you can, and very slowly come down, reclined pigeon pose, cross the ankle over your knee, and reach it through with your arms, pull it in. So the element of earth is also connected to our root chakra, located right at the base of the spine. And this is all about safety, connection, family of origin, and connection to the physical world. So very much tied with the element of earth. And let's release one last time. Just draw your knees in towards your belly. Give it a big squeeze. And we're gonna rock up cat and cow tabletop pose. Palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Spread your fingertips nice and wide. As you inhale, drop the belly. Lift the gaze, curl tailbone up. Exhale, round and contract. Two more like this. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bring it in. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Come back into a neutral tabletop pose and really make sure you have a foundation here. Push into your fingertips and knuckles, reach your right leg up and back, roll that right hip down so it's no higher than the left one. Pull your navel in towards your lower back, so flatten out your spine. And if you'd like to go further, left arm stretches forward. So don't worry about how high your left hand and your right foot are. Instead, try to find a little bit more length, like you're being stretched apart in both directions, and always come back to your core. So flatten out your lower back. Stability from the earth. Take one more full breath. Keep your leg up, just let your left hand come back to the floor. Come up onto your right fingertips and start to roll so that you're stacking right hip over the left and maybe bring your right hand to your hip. Keep that right leg lifted, squeeze into the glutes and push into that heel. If you'd like to take it further, stretch your right arm up and maybe start to look up towards that thumb. Holding here, big inhale. Start to look down towards the floor. Right hand comes down and step the right foot forward in between the palms to the top of the mat. Into your lunge, pressing down into your hips. Just getting a nice opening through your hip flexors here. And we're gonna tuck our back toes under, lift the back knee off the mat and come up high onto your fingertips. So you're letting your belly lift off of your front leg. Maybe hold here if this is enough or go further by reaching left arm forward, right arm back. So this is like a big diagonal line from your left fingertips all the way to your left heel. Keep a deep, generous bend into that front knee. If you're holding your breath, you've gone too far. Strong in the pose. And fingertips come down, walk to the left, wide-legged forward fold. So turn the right toes in, both feet parallel to the shorter edges of your mat as you fold on down. Try to relax your head. Relax your jaw. And can you feel the energy from the ground beneath you moving up through the soles of your feet, up through the backs of your legs and joining towards that root chakra at the base of the tailbone? And walk your hands back towards the front of your mat and we're gonna step back downward facing dog. So your first down dog, feel free to move a little bit here for this one. Just waking up, 
the backs of the legs, stretching it out. And now widen your feet. So I don't want them to be hip width distance apart. I want your feet to be a little bit closer towards the edges of your mat. As you inhale, come all the way forward into plank. Strong here and lift your right leg up. Drop the right toes down, downward facing dog. Let's do that one more time. Inhale to plank pose and then three-legged plank. This time lift, lift your left leg up. And left toes down, downward facing dog. A little harder now, let's come forward into plank pose and see if you can stay facing the floor as you reach your right arm up. Bicep along the ear. Right hand down, downward facing dog. Last one, I promise, inhale to plank and this time extend your left arm forward. Keep that left shoulder wrapping down. Downward facing dog. Big stretch here. And knees come down to the floor, align palms under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Cat and cow, as you inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, exhale, round and contract. Two more. Pushing into the tops of the feet, last one. So two-legged tabletop pose, find a neutral spine. Your core is super strong here. Left leg stretches up and back. Roll the left hip down, keep them level. Just doing this should be quite a challenge. Pull your navel in. And if you'd like to go further, right arm stretches forward. Bicep along the ear, right thumb is pointing up towards the sky. Imagine you're kicking a wall behind you. Flatten out your lower back. Slow, steady breaths, keep the leg up. Just let your right hand come down. Come up onto your left fingertips as you start to roll over to the right. Keep the leg lifted, left hand to your hip. Squeeze into the glutes, lift the leg up even higher. And maybe your left arm reaches up to the sky as you look up towards your thumb. So where can you source that inner stability from? Looking down towards the mat, low lunge, left foot steps forward to the top of the mat. And just give yourself a moment to stretch out through your hip flexors into your psoas. Letting gravity do the work for you. And before we go back to strengthening, tuck your toes under, lift the back knee off the mat and start to come up a little bit onto your fingertips, maybe hovering here or reaching right arm forward, left arm back. As you look down at your left knee, notice if it's wavering side to side. Try to keep it still and stable. Draw your navel in, flatten out through your spine. Wide legged fold, walk your hands to the right this time, turn the left toes in and fold on down. And really any arm variation that you'd like here, I'm just letting my palms ground into the floor just so I have a little bit more stability and a little bit more connection with the earth. But if there's something else that feels better, you're welcome to do that at home. Try not to dig your toes into the floor. And let's walk back to the front of the mat. So back into that lunge, downward facing dog. And again, for this down dog, we're gonna do the same thing. Widen your feet more than your hips. Inhale forward into your plank pose. This time, left leg rises up first. Does it need to be too high? Left toes down, downward facing dog. One limb at a time. Inhale to plank. Right leg lifts, push into your fingertips and knuckles. Right toes down, hips lift up and back. Inhale, plank. Left arm lifts up. Try to wrap that left shoulder down. Left hand down, downward dog. Last one, inhale forward. Right arm rises, squeeze. Right hand down, downward facing dog. And from our downward dog, 
narrow your stance with your feet so they're just back to being like a regular down dog, feet hip width distance apart. And let's reach our right leg up towards the sky. Keep it straight and squared. And then pull that knee and the foot through as you step it forward in between your hands to the top of the mat, high lunge. Inhale, arms rise. Similar to what we did before, keep your arms up overhead and tilt all the way forward. Big diagonal line here. Really working through the feet, through your quads, through your glutes, all the way up the spine and the arms. Bring your hands together at the front of your heart. Step into chair pose, big toes together, heels apart. Rock your weight back into your heels, length and tailbone down. And now push into all four corners of both feet to lift up. And let's find our tree pose. I'm gonna to turn towards you to make it a little easier to see. You're gonna lean on your right leg and bring your left foot somewhere alongside the edge of the thigh or of the calf. Doesn't matter if you're doing the other side at home, we're gonna do both anyway. Just remember which leg you're lifting. Option one, you stay as you are. If you'd like, you can add a side bend. So either bringing your left hand to your hip or holding on to your left ankle. Let's all reach our right arm up and start to lean towards your bent knee. So find something that's not moving to focus on. We really cannot do an earth class without doing a tree pose. So the tree roots down and is stable, but is also able to stretch up to lengthen and to flow and bend. So trees are not necessarily perfectly still. It's totally fine for you to be wobbling a little bit. Just like swaying in the wind. Come all the way back through to center and release. And I'll just turn to the front again once more. Widen your feet towards the edges of your mat. As you inhale, lift chin and chest up high. You can bend a little bit here as you fold all the way down. Catch a hold of your big toes with your two piece fingers. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. And then exhale, bend your elbows away from each other as you fold. So getting a little deeper through the backs of the legs. And release the hold of your toes. Keep your feet as they are. Start to bend your knees until your thighs and your spine are parallel to the floor. Either hold on here or make it harder by extending your arms forward. This is your bear pose. So different from chair pose, here we're trying to keep everything at the same height. One more big belly breath, super strong here. Exhale, fold it down and step it back, downward facing dog. You're welcome to stay here if you'd like or you can take a vinyasa, inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And we all meet, downward facing dog. Setting ourselves up for the other side, left leg stretches up and step it through for your high lunge. So your feet should be about hip width distance apart or so as you extend your arms up. And now keep that length in your spine so we don't want to round and contract. Think of lifting up and then over. Big diagonal line, still that deep generous bend in your front knee. You should feel the heat start to build. The earth can be nurturing, but it can also be really tough. Let's bring our hands to heart, chair pose. Step it forward. Sink down as low as you can. Roll your shoulders back and push to lift up. Tree pose to the other side. So this time leaning on your left foot, bringing that right foot in or just doing the opposite of what you did the first time at home. So maybe your tree pose stays here, or you can add your side bend. Right hand can go to the hip, or right hand can go to the ankle. Left arm stretches up and start to ease over. Side bending pose. So lengthening out from your right fingertips to your right shoulder, right shoulder to your right hip. 
hip to the knee, knee to the ankle, all connected up together. Lift back up through to center and release. Widen your feet to the edges of the mat. Hands on your hips, inhale, lift, and exhale, fold. You can bend your knees here. Catch a hold of your big toes once more. Halfway lift, flat back. And then maintain the length in your spine as you bend your elbows to fold. You can absolutely bend your knees if you'd like here. Take the tension out of your neck. And instead of doing bear pose a second time, like what we did the first time, this time we're gonna come into a yogi squat malasana. So heels in, toes out, bend the knees and drop your hips. Hands can come to the front of the heart as your elbows press your knees open a little wider. Really wonderful earth pose. Squeeze your glutes, downward facing dog, and you're welcome to take a vinyasa or you simply hang out in your down dog. Inhale to plank, chaturanga, back bend, downward dog. And moving into the yin portion of our practice, bring your knees down. Let's begin with a toe squat. You can do this with or without a block. So toe squat, we're trying to curl our toes underneath us, sitting up on the heels, and you might need to move that little toe off to the side. So this should feel pretty intense through the foundation of your feet. If it's a little too much, you can make it a little easier by resting on one or two blocks so there's not all of your weight bearing down. So we're only holding this one for about two and a half minutes. Feel free to come out earlier if you'd like. So finding some stillness in the yin portion of our practice. The vinyasa being active and dynamic. And the yin being receptive yielding and still. So what does the element of earth have to offer you? Let's release carefully from this pose. Just point the toes back, take your time. And we'll try to connect really to the posterior chain, so the back body coming into our half butterfly pose. Extend your right leg forward and bring your left foot into the inner groin and inner thigh, and we're gonna fold on down from here. 
So I like to do this with blocks, either one or two under the forehead. You can turn your hands to face up towards the sky so you're not tempted to push or pull your weight in. This is about receptivity. Just allowing yourself to unfold into the pose, letting go of your expectations. Find a slow, steady breath rhythm. Unwinding a little more with every exhale. So to push your hands into the floor, take your time to slowly come out. And before we go to the other side, straighten both legs out in front of you and just feel your connection to the earth. Through the backs of your legs, through your seat. And we'll go to the other side. Right foot comes in towards inner thigh, inner groin and start to hinge forward from the hips as you fold on down. Modifying in any way you might need, using more or less props, maybe elevating your seat. Rolling your shoulders down and away from your ears, soften into it. Thank you. 
Let's make our way out. Take your time. Push into your hands, inch by inch, your spine uncurls. And we'll be lowering down onto our backs. Keep one block somewhere close by as you lower down. We'll set ourselves up for a spinal twist, something I really like to do after forward folds. Keep your right leg out in front of you and bring your left knee in towards your chest. You're gonna cross your left knee over your body towards the right. Left arm can stretch out to the side. So this is option one, just hanging out in your twist. If you'd like to go deeper into the legs, you can straighten that left leg and maybe slide your hand further down towards your shin or your ankle. Feel your left shoulder blade wrap and rotate down. And I like to keep my head looking straight up, but you can always gaze over towards your left shoulder if you'd like. Send your breath all the way down to your low belly. Letting yourself be fully nourished by the earth. If you had your left leg straight, start to bend your knee once more and we'll all roll back to center. You might need to shift your hips a little bit over towards the right side of your mat in order to make your way into the twist on the other side. So this time your left leg is straight and you can pull your right knee to your belly. Cross your right thigh over, maybe with the help of your left hand, and your right arm can extend out to the side, maybe staying here or deepening this pose by straightening the right leg and sliding your hand a little bit further down towards your calf or your knee or your ankle, whatever you can hold on to here. Just try to keep your collarbones facing up.
bend your right knee if the leg was straight and start to roll onto your back once more. And before we go into Shavasana, our final resting pose, we'll take supported bridge. So grab a hold of one block, any height that you'd like as you lift your hips up, sliding the block underneath you. And wherever it feels best for your arms and your feet, just get yourself settled here. And one last time, asking yourself what you need to learn from the element of earth. Maybe it's stability strength, it's nourishment, whatever earth represents to you. Push into your feet to lift the pelvis off of your block and check in to see what your body needs before settling into Shavasana, your final resting pose, taking up lots of space. And as you close your eyes, you might come back to your visualization of the landscape that best represents the element of earth to you. Maybe imagine yourself in Shavasana, right there.
breathe a little deeper. Start to reawaken from this rest by moving a little, lengthening out. And you can roll to one side, use your arms to help yourself come up into a seated position. Hands joining at the front of your heart as you close your eyes. A silent prayer of gratitude for the element of earth and all its empowerments. And we'll close with the chant of Om. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this practice with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I have more of these elemental flows on my channel. Um, so if you're looking for more, definitely go and try those for yourself. Please let me know, leave me a comment, and I just want to hear from you how this class went, what you thought, if you want more elemental classes or more Vin to Yin style classes. Thank you so much. Namaste.